This is going to be a little more difficult than normal. Let's discuss. Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. For the simple fact that we can watch the Rams versus Lion game on TV instead of getting a subscription to a service that we don't want, which is Peacock, this game already wins. And I'm sure for the people that are in Detroit in a dome versus the fans who were out there in Kansas City <laughs> during that game, I think one of the coldest games in NFL history, this game is already winning. All right. So if this is your first time tuning into one of my videos. This is my difference maker video. So my difference makers, this is not the captain spot. This is not the second, third, fourth uh, flex spot. This is that player that I believe can round out your lineup, that fifth flex spot or that sixth spot in your lineup. Now, these difference makers a lot of times are insane, but if you have been watching, you know, showdown games this year, you've been watching the NFL this year, if you just made a list of some of the difference makers, not necessarily the ones I picked, because I did not obviously pick every difference maker, but if you made a list of the players that are under $3,000 that have been the difference in people winning 20, 30, 50, whatever thousand dollars, and you winning $20, You'd be like, yuck. So these players are nasty, but they're important because we know when it comes to DFS, you are trying to get different from everyone else because number one, if you actually win, you don't want to chop the prize. I talked about earlier this year where uh, the prize got chopped so much that even though the contest was like two or three hundred thousand dollars, the winner got the winners over hundreds of them got like three thousand dollars. You don't want that to be you. Number two, you want to get different because you don't want to go up and down every time something happens. You want to be different. You want to be going up when everybody else is going down on the leaderboard. Also, I have not abandoned you. I will not abandon you. I'm going to be here for the next round and I guess the AFC, NFC round, and then also for the Super Bowl. Plus, if you don't already know, I do other content. I have PGA DFS and I also do NBA DFS. And starting in April, I will do MLB DFS. All right. So this contest, this is going to be more difficult than normal. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, let's start with Detroit. So Detroit has two very, very good running backs, two running backs that on in a normal situation, they both would be starters on any other team. So Gibbs is, I guess, the starter and uh, he's definitely more dynamic, but he hasn't had his last two games haven't been the best. And then, of course, you have Montgomery, who was the starter last year, and he's kind of been steady the entire year. So you have two really good running backs so anytime you have detroit in a game you're trying to wreck your brain to figure out which running back should i start and then to make things even more fun we saw laporta go down in week 18 and he is going to try to play I mean, to me, my thought process is even if he plays, I feel like he'll be more of a decoy because that injury looked nasty. So I don't know. I feel I mean, I love Laporta. Laporta was one of the few good players on my fantasy football team. So personally, I love Laporta. I was on he was on my best ball team. I love Laporta. But I feel real nervous about uh, uh, starting him in this game. So maybe sometime uh, before we lock our lineups, we'll find out that he, you know, he's out. Then it makes it so much easier. But to make things even more crazy, his backup, Mitchell, also got injured week 18. So now we're in a situation where all of a sudden Brock Wright, who was the starter at the beginning of the year in theory, uh, now he could be the tight end one and he's only 3000 Sorry, he's $2,000. That's a uh, captive spot. He's only $2,000. All right, let's move on to the Rams. And we know the conundrum of all conundrums is Nakua. Is it going to be Cup or is it going to be Nakua? I don't know. Nobody knows. Matthew Stafford probably don't even know. So we have two teams, one team that has two alpha male wide receivers we have 
one team that has two alpha male running backs it just it makes our life very difficult and then as far as trying to get different both of these teams have a really condensed amount of players who they throw to for example the opposite of this team are the Kansas City Chiefs. So you don't know who is gonna get the ball. Is it gonna be, you know, Blake Bell? Is it gonna be James? Is it gonna be Kadarius Tony? Who's gonna get the ball? We don't know. Is Andy Reid gonna put a third string running back in there that we didn't even know was gonna play? So this is the opposite of that. So in one way, it makes our choices and our lineups easier, but trying to get different is really hard. All right, so let's look at the snap counts for the Detroit Lions. And we talked about the running back. So uh, Jameer Gibbs uh, gets more time, gets more snaps on the field. But David Montgomery, the lowest amount of snaps he's gotten in the last five weeks is 35%. So he's going to be on the field. And a lot of times when he's on the field, he usually gets the ball in his gut. I don't trust any other running backs for uh, for the Lions. Wide receivers. We have a top five, you know, wide receiver in Amara St. Brown. We have Josh Reynolds as the second wide receiver, wide receiver two. Uh, Khalif Raymond is injured. He's normally the, the third wide receiver. Uh, Williams, I think Williams is supposed to be back, but very interestingly, now you have Donovan Peoples Jones. And I like him not only because I think he might be the third wide receiver in this um, setup on Sunday. But also, I like him because he is the punt returner. Tight end, we talked about the mess. Laporta, who knows? Uh, James Mitchell injured. So Brock Wright is looking real good at this point. So let's get to the difference makers. And yes, I'm going with Brock Wright. His stats look horrible. Please don't make any picks about Brock Wright based on any stats you see on DraftKings or any kind of site. If you put him in your lineup, you put him in your lineup because either A, Laporta doesn't play, B, Laporta is a decoy, or well, is there anything else? That's really it. <laughs> uh, so I really like Brock Wright for that reason at $2,000. All right, so next I have Donovan Peoples-Jones. Once again, he's only $800. I love punt returners, so I love putting Donovan Peoples-Jones with the Rams defense because if he actually does return that punt, you're going to get the Rams points. You're going to get the Donovan People Jones points. And if that actually happens, you're going, if you're not going to be at the top of the leaderboard, if you constructed any kind of decent lineup around beyond the Rams and Donovan People's Jones, you're going to be sitting real pretty. All right, let's look at the snap counts for the Rams. It's Kyron Williams' team. I don't trust any, unless he twists his ankle or something. We can see that week 17, he was on the field 94% of the time. 94, 90, 77, and 79 is probably some kind of blowout or something, but he's always on the field. He's active in all facets that a running back can be active. Granted, uh, the Lions have a really good run defense, but a lot of times good running backs find a way to make it work. Wide receiver, we talked about it, Nakua and Cup. The interesting thing about the wide receiver situation, though, for the Rams, as a lot of people are finding out more, Demarcus Robinson has been playing really well. Now, we're not going to count Week 18, but before Week 18, he had a touchdown in four out of the last five games. Tight end. So Higby is questionable, but I believe Higby's going to play. Uh, Higby's going to play. He's always an option. But the problem with the Rams is there's only one ball, and it usually is going to be in the hands or the gut of Cup, Nakua, Robinson, or um, or Kyron Williams. So Higby is going to be lower owned than his actual skill level uh, is. It's just the fact that this team is just so dynamic. Um, Davis Allen, you know, I love second string tight ends. I can't recommend him, but I can't hate on him because he's the kind of person that has been a difference maker in the past. All right. So first, yeah, I'm going outside of my range because, you know, everybody's going to be so focused on Cup and Nakua that a lot of people are going to think about Robinson. But we can see before week 18. Uh, he had targets of 10, 6, 3, and 10, and he had touchdowns, like I said, in four out of the last five games, and he had double-digit fantasy points. All right, next, I mean, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel with the Rams. I mean, they really have a condensed, you know, route tree, everything, but Skoranek, we know that when he does get the opportunity, we know he has the hands to do it, and I mean, 
I'm not feeling all I'm not feeling all you know warm and fuzzy about it. But if you put him in your lineup and he actually does break one off, he does have a touchdown this year. Is really gonna make your lineup look real good. And then we have Austin Trammell, and I have him in here only. Uh, I have him in here only because he is the punt returner. He's rarely on the field. He only has four receptions. But if he actually is in there and you have him with the defense, then you're going to be looking good. All right. So let's look at my thought process lineup. So uh, the Lions are three and a half point favorites. They're at home. They're in a dome. So uh, my first lineup is a 4-2 Detroit lineup. This lineup assumes that the um, that the Lions win at home. And, um, you know, golf is happy. He kind of got his revenge. I mean, he, he could never get his full revenge unless he wins a Super Bowl. But, he, you know, he got, you know, a little small revenge. So, obviously, putting Amara St. Brown in there and then coupling Peoples, Jones with the Lions. I might have said Rams earlier, but I meant the Lions. So, coupling him with the Lions and then having Jameer Gibbs in there. And then I keep Matthew Stafford in there, which is kind of a safety net so you can get some points for you don't have to decide between Cup and Nakua, and then I have Kyron Williams because he's one of the best running backs in football. All right, so my next lineup is Rams domination. This is Stafford coming back to Detroit and rubbing it in their face. He already had Super Bowl rings, so he's won. He's won, but he goes back to Detroit and just rubs it in their face. <sighs> Why did I pick Nakua over Cup? <laughs> I have no good reason because nobody knows. Um, you can have your lineup with Cup. You can have your lineup with Nakua. I think you want to try to play it safe. You can have a lineup with Stafford. But just know if you play it safe and put Stafford in the captain spot, if Nakua or Cup go off, you're not going to win the big prize. You're going to place. You're going to get your money back. You're going to min cash. You might win, you know, depending on the contest. You're going to get some money. But if you're really trying to win that guap, you're going to have to man up and decide, am I going to put Nakua or Cup in the captain spot? And I don't know which one to tell you. <laughs> the only the only line I put in there uh, in this lineup would be Amara St. Brown. And like I said, this is total domination. This is Trammell returning a punt. And then I have the Rams defense. So let me know your thoughts. If you have any specific questions, let me know. But otherwise, go out there and win that guap. I hope this video helps you with your lineups. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll talk to you next time.